Good afternoon, everybody. We are live with a lavish conversation with Princess Akima. Hi, Princess Akima. Hey. Do I call you Princess Akima or Akima here? Because I refer to you both ladies. Well, it depends. Yes, yeah, sometimes a lot of like in professional settings, people will say like Princess Akima. Some people call me princess and some people just call me Akima. So anything that rolls off your tongue and one of those three variations will work fine. <laughs> when I think of you, I definitely think queen. So princess doesn't roll off my tongue as quickly, you know, because since I've met you, you definitely have given and shared your queendom um, to me at every turn. Um, so today's lavish conversation, as I said, is with Princess Akima. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for tuning in. Um, with regard to lavish conversations, I always try to, you know, introduce us. Lavish conversations are just that. Lavish conversations about why existing is not enough. Um, you have a choice in your life. You make the choice oftentimes more than once to go from existing to truly living. And I feel like it's a conscious decision. And this platform is for conversations with inspiring people who do just that and who exemplify just that. So if you could tell the people a little bit about yourself, um, Princess Akima, welcome. Thank you for joining us. Oh, well, hey. And I'm, I'm like, y'all see me looking down. Y'all forgive me. I'm over here trying to get some people that I <laughs> come watch this live um about me well let's just start with the name because it's funny that you're like oh princess doesn't roll off and i know in the um you know years past people have been like oh well, queen you're a queen you're a queen i absolutely am a queen akima actually means princess and so i people have been calling me that since i was a child so even as i've grown up as an adult and i am in my 40s for anyone who's curious i still allow that to be a part of my um my being and how people address me because it's the name that my parents chose for me based upon its meaning. Um, so I wanted to share that now that I'm trying to um, body some young <laughs> juvenile sort of um, component, but just more so like that's just who I am. And I've been there since I was a child. Um, what is else about me? I mean, people always want to know, what do you do? And that tends to be professionally. I have all these hobbies and I guess we could talk about that a little bit at some point. Um, but professionally, mm -hmm. I am I'm a business owner, um, like many, um, you know, other individuals. But I think what's unique for what I do is I spend my time really working with um, individuals, with um, families, couples, parents, caregivers, whomever, trying to assist in um, the healing and the restoration of um, the human body. I am also, by trade, I'm a certified holistic health practitioner. And the short of that means is I really just want to help to eradicate disease that may manifest in the body. And so when people are trying to figure out what can I do to help the body in its natural healing processes, um, they could find someone like me and we can do just that. As far as outside of work, um, for anyone who follows me on social media, I love to hike. And so if you will catch some random hiking photos and videos from me because I'm a big hiker, um, I love music and I love plants. There are about, I don't know, 30, 35 of them that live in the house here with my husband and I. And um Do and you I want name your plants. Can I name my plants like the types? Do you name them? No, like do you give them names? No, I don't. They do not have names, but it's okay. It's okay. I don't they don't have any names, but it's like it's funny because the two that get my attention are my two piece lilies. Um, they probably need to be named because they are the most neediest of all the plants that live in this house are peace lilies. Like <laughs> that's my most neediest plant too. Uh, it's actually my Jeremiah plant. It's the the plant. I I wasn't ever a green thumb person, but I definitely have become one over this last year. I find caring for other things and people, you know, helps to bring that energy back. So go ahead, tell us more about your life overall. Um, more about my life. Well, aside from, you know, work, I am actually a, currently a student right now. Um, and that's fun and interesting being a student and being old. So, <laughs> and I know people older than me go to school and they do it well. And I would like to channel some of that energy. But um, in January of this year, I went back to school to get licensed as an acupuncturist. And so I finished two um, 
quarters so far, and I'll be starting my third come uh, uh, Monday. So, awesome. I, um, Congratulations. Thank you. So, yeah. with you being a holistic health practitioner, with you really, I mean, if anybody was to look at your life, they can see, you know, if you talk to you, you feel it in your essence, in your spirit, you definitely, you know, yeah, she's a, lo- a a lifelong learner. Exactly, that's what you you show in every day, everyday conversation with you. So, but what was your wake up? What was your aha moment? What made you go from existing to living? Or when did you feel that shift in your life happen? Hmm. I feel like I'm still shifting. <laughs> um, you know, I, I, the thing for shifting for me is I'm propelled by like loss. You know. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I will say specifically for law. So for me, and I feel like every time I'm like on a new platform that I'm like repeating my story. And sometimes I'm like, man, you're telling that same story again, Akima. But I also realize that like we have to testify what we've been through. It gives other people hope and encouragement and strength. And it speaks to resiliency. But the thing that I think initially helped me with just saying like I'm going to live this life is I lost my mom um, over 14 years ago. Mm-hmm. And her transition um, was very much health related um, and things started to deteriorate in her body. And for me, it was like, it felt so out of control. Like I, we couldn't help, we didn't know what to do. We were just subject to whatever, you know, her doctors were saying and, you know, they were limited on what they knew as well, if we we're just completely honest. And so yeah. you know, she made her transition. And I think, you know, dealing with that loss, dealing with her passing and, you know, for you guys who are watching, um, who are watching this live, who know my story, you know, my mom passed on my wedding day with my husband and I, and the devastation, the hurt, the pain, the just angst of all of that. I had like some choices to make, you know, it was either you let this situation define you in a way where you never come back. Um, and I feel for people who have situations that go down like that, right? And it takes you out and it's just so much and it feels so overwhelming. And then we have other ones who, I would say like myself, you take it and it becomes like the fuel, you know, that as I channel that pain, I remember her memory. I remember what she went through when somebody new comes to um, the practice and they've got this going on and that going on, or they want to get off medication or they want to avoid some predetermined, you know, fate um, that someone's telling them that this is going to be the outcome of your story. And so those were wake up calls for me. You know, my own health has been a wake up call for me, you know. A lot of uh, adults don't realize that a lot of our illnesses manifest from emotions. And the year after my mom passed, I had contracted high blood pressure. So you have to imagine 26 year old with high blood pressure seems very like, yeah. And and I was told, you know, because I was black, we're just bound to get it. And I'm just kind of like, yeah, okay. And then they want to put me on medication. And I was like, and I just, I, I was really firm, I was really adamant, I was really still angry, you know, about her passing. And at right. that time, um, and that, those are wake up calls for me. And I think now, you know, when, you, when that happened, when you felt that, when you felt that, that anger, how did you shift that anger into action? How did you shift it from anger to fuel instead of, you know, because we all experience loss at some point, unfortunately, mm-hmm. and unfortunately, it does hit close to home at some point in your life. And like you said, when you get hit by it, it's so easy. You have every reason, every excuse, as I say, in the book to fold up and go inside and, you know, cut yourself off and isolate, you know, and just exist. So I feel like, how did you do That's very integral. What made you click that switch right there? That's such a good question, Tamika. Um, there's two things that are coming to mind. You know, one, um, my mother worked too hard <laughs> for me to quit, you know? Um, I'm first generation born in this country. Both my parents, who have both transitioned um, by this point, they were born in the Caribbean, um, respectively Jamaica and Trinidad. And our families worked way too hard to get us here. Like we were the dream. We were the reason why they hustled and struggled and suffered and got here. And so for me to quit would just like almost mean like their actions were in vain. You know, you're dishonoring their memories and these ancestors who have done so much to get you to this point. So are you going to really quit? You know what I mean? Because it got hard. Right. And 
And then the other component of that too is I'm also inspired by my clients, you know, when our health is so um, important to us, right? And so it's fragile, right? It makes us real vulnerable when we're not well. Um, you know, there's something chronic and it's been going on for so long. And people are so brave to trust me, to talk to me, to find me, to try what I'm, you know, suggesting that they do. And I'm like, how dare I like be a quitter when there's somebody here dealing with something, you know? And I, and I, that's a reminder to me too for the comment and the conversation that I made earlier about, um, comment I made earlier about the high blood pressure. I reversed my high blood pressure within a year of getting my diagnosis. And, and so medication, right? Not that I, and I didn't get on medication. And I just want to be clear because as a practitioner, I got to do my little disclaimer because I don't want nobody to listen to this. I would never, ever, ever, ever tell a client to get off of their medication. The people who put you on are the ones who have to get you off. That was just my personal story that I chose not to. But I just want people to know that I am responsible as a practitioner. I just, I'm not going to be like, let's just drop the medication. Because right. once you're on it, there's a way in which the body has to wean off a bit for your um, safety. Now, did you start taking it first or did you never start taking the medicine? I know at 26, regulatory meds just don't work in the schedule of the average 26-year-old. You know what I mean? Yeah, and I was an average. I was the first 26-year-old, you know? I yeah, was, yeah, exactly. I yeah. never started. Mm -mm. So you changed what? Your diet and exercise? Yeah, it was it was interesting. And I was going to say funny just because that's a transition word, but there was nothing funny about it. I remember... I was suggested that I just start walking. I'm showing my hands on purpose. Just walk five minutes one direction, five minutes back to your house, right? Get 10 minutes of walk every day. My mm -hmm. fingers used to slow when I would walk when I had high blood pressure. And I remember being on walks and being like and crying to my husband and praying for strength and for energy. And it took like a year to really for that to kind of come to pass, you know, to I can walk, I can move, I can eat better, you know? Mm -hmm. I went from eating, you know, stuff to, you know, following a fully plant-based diet, which I still do to this day. Mm -hmm. um, like I was mentioning to you all earlier, I hike now, and I could have never envisioned when I was 26 going for a hike. I'd have been too frightened to be up, you know, three, four, 800 feet in the air with these swollen fingers, you know? From a rock, if you all didn't see my post from yesterday, I shared a post from your page, actually. Like, amazing. She's saying, oh, yeah, I hike. No, no, I've hiked before. That's considered walking. No, what she does is something different. I'm not sure what to call it, but it's uh, different. Listen, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a marketer, and so... Just I do I do these monthly hikes um, where I lead a group of folks around different places, you know, locally and prayerfully as we continue to grow. Um, this group will go more nationally and maybe at some point even internationally. Mm -hmm. But I I was hanging off of a rock because I just could not. The rock was sitting there waiting for me to hang, and I remember putting my hands on it and told my husband, I "said Oh my gosh, capture the picture." And he's my photographer all the time, and he captured me hanging off of that rock because. That is at um, an 800 feet elevation. That's where I am at that point. Mm -hmm. And that's unreal. So no, we it, they are hikes. We don't really do rock climbing. It's just that rock was poking and it like was just calling. like, it was calling on me. Yeah. It was calling you. <laughs> but no, that's a perfect example though of living. You could have just walked past the rock. You could have taken a picture of the rock, but instead you had the experience, you know? Mm -hmm. Honestly, you and your husband, like that's a beautiful moment. And then you were able to share that with all of us. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting you say the word experience. Um, that's important to me. I, that's, and, that's, and that's a rule of thumb for my life, with my romantic life, with my professional life, with my friendships. Um, mm -hmm. It's too, because I love memories, you know. Um, for you all watching this on Facebook, you guys know that we get those um, Facebook memories. Oh, a year ago today, you were doing this, right? Right. They made that for me. Like that was for me. I love looking at memories. I take thousands of pictures everywhere I go. I'm doing way more videos um, than I've done ever before. And you just don't realize like this is your life. You know, when you blink your eye, you're 30, you blink your eye, you're 40, you blink your eye, you're 50. And it's like, yeah, wow. So I love creating experiences because they create memories. Time flies when you're having fun, right? <laughs> So if you're living life right, it's flying and, you know, you look up and it's happened already. But just the same, you're just existing. Sometimes life is still flying and it's flying past you, you know. 
there's so many things that you miss out on just not jumping into action. So what mm -hmm. type of things would you say you could incur, you would um, advise our viewers to start kind of putting into place? What are some good steps to try to start making that shift or identifying? Hmm. I, this is probably like a random answer because I'm like, I always like the first thing that came to my mind. I don't try to like, oh, I like that. Most intelligent PhD work. No, no, no. The first thing that came to mind when you asked that question, that's why I'm thinking about the word forgiveness. Because the thing that really weighs us down from experiencing life is where we've been wronged or somebody didn't do us right or something didn't happen. And then what happens is that thing is like straight. I don't, I don't have the strongest, but they're kind of strong. Y'all see that flex a little bit, but it has like the strongest chokehold on you. And then you not living because you over here on something that happened. And it could be a week ago, a month ago. It could be years. It could be from your childhood. I think the first thing I would tell someone is like, yeah, forgive Forgive people, forgive situations, let that transition happen in your heart and move on because when you don't, you will be unable to live in the moment. And yeah. we're thinking about all this time and coming back to loss. And I was speaking to that earlier. And, and I'm talking about thinking about loss, not from a fearful standpoint, but loss in the sense that like, because I know the people that I want to be around may not be here forever. I'm going to live to the max, enjoying them. I, myself, am not going to be here forever. So I, too, want to live today and tomorrow and however many days, years, tens of years, 20s of years, 50s of years left to the fullest. So yeah, that would be the first thing I would tell people is like, think about the situations that are bogging down your mind, you know? And then as a practitioner of holistic health, those things are also making you sick, you know? Yeah. People come into the practice and they don't realize. They're like, oh, well, um, I, this is going on. I think I need to do that. And I'm like, no, we actually have to heal emotionally because what's manifesting physically actually is originating with your emotions. So yes. from a healing standpoint, from a living in the moment standpoint, forgiveness is the first. That is, It all comes from a thought. You know, I was just talking about um, how, you know, most of our conversations occur with ourself, you know, you're most you're talking to yourself all the time. Even when you're reading, when you're bathing, when you're, you're talking to yourself nonstop. But that negative self-talk is are things that were recorded in your brain long ago, you know. Mm -hmm. But with the forgiveness aspect that you were talking about, oh my gosh, that's been so heavy in my head um, about the fact that like we have these issues with you know how we were raised or something someone said to us or even somebody cutting you off in traffic and instead of thinking instead of humanizing that other person and putting yourself in their shoes or pop or even just trying to for a second think from their perspective a little bit we get angry whereas the person might have cut you off because they're late when you're late you kind of get a little rush too you know what i mean give them grace just like you want people to give you grace your parents, they raised you, okay, most parents, overall, overall grade score, probably not an A if they're still, you know, with us and you're both adults now, you're probably like, yeah, you should have did this, you should have did that, this was wrong, that was wrong. Well, guess what? You didn't come with an instruction manual and they did the best they could with what? The toolbox they were given. And the toolbox they were given might not have even been a box. Let's think back to, especially, when you say that you're our first generation, you know what I mean, in the in this in um, born in the US from your family. Well, I'm not, but guess what? When you go generations just a couple back in my family, we were in slavery. Where if you had a baby, they probably wouldn't be there the next day. You know what I mean? So the fact of the matter is these parenting skills, these child rearing skills, there it's a learning process and it's evolving ever, you know, ever truly. So you know, at some point in time, we have to stop looking at that past and what we didn't get and start looking at what we can get now for ourselves in order to move forward. You know, mm -hmm. appreciate what they did give you. They taught you not to play in traffic. So you haven't been hit by a car yet. Maybe. You know what I mean? Or, you know, I've actually been hit by a car, but we won't. <laughs> I actually have. I'm actually been in my car, but it wasn't my parents Yeah, I was about to say, were you playing in traffic? That's the next. Real part. short, y'all. Real short, since like, cause we want to lighten this up. I was walking on the sidewalk, and you know how you walk, and then there's like the street. The sidewalk gets low for cars coming in and out of like a retail shopping center. 
Yeah. So I'm walking on the sidewalk. that's gotten low because it's where the cars would come in and out. And this woman did not see that I was walking and she hit me with her car. I was probably like 17, 18 years old. My mother was a few, so my mom's still living a few steps behind me. And oh, I remember the woman got out of her car like, oh my God. Like she like she literally hit me. Now you know you're coming out of the shopping center, y'all. So you're not going but a couple miles per hour. Right, right. It was the fact that like you hit me. Like you, you, you hit me. Me. Did you fall? Listen, see now the adult me would have been like, you know, I, I should have. You know, like a child, you're just like, <sighs> I remember like started hyperventilating and cry, I cried and she got yeah. out of her car and then she went ask my mom and I did, oh, can I pray with you all? And of course my mother was like, no. no. <laughs> she said no. <laughs> Not because she was being mean. She was like, I need, I need to attend to my daughter. Right. And like, we're going to need to go because... You know, you're you need gonna to need to go. the car. We need a moment. Right. We need a moment. <laughs> I was just like, yeah, I, I, I probably should have fallen to me. Maybe I'd be talking to you from my mansion. Honestly of- speaking, my ex boyfriend, when I was about 19, uh, was in the parking lot. We were coming out of the store, and a car did um, back into him. He's like six, seven, though. So you know how you used to tap somebody in the back of their knee and their knee would buckle? Yeah, 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 yeah. He got hit with like a pickup truck, but it like just made him buckle his knee and he like kept walking. Like, who gets hit by a truck and is like, oh, wait, you just hit me with your truck, you know? Listen, the moral of the story is, y'all, when y'all coming through these retail centers, Be tuck careful. all your mirrors and look over your shoulders, please and thank you. These people are on these retail high purchases and- they on their phones. <laughs> It's loose out here. But yes, yes. So, I mean, I definitely, so what are some of the things other than hiking, what other types of things have do you do to get out here and live? Because you, not only you, but you and your husband definitely live life together. You experience life in different facets and not like, you know, yes, the traditional things, but you seem to step out of your comfort zone oftentimes also. Yeah, I mean. Very important. And it is important. I, you know, one of the things that came to mind was travel. You know, prior to COVID, we were traveling probably like five or six times a year. Um, we do most of our travel domestic and everybody want to go like, oh, there's here, there. But I'm like, we do live in a beautiful country. There are other beautiful countries, but there's some beauty in these here United States um, as well. Um, so travel is a big deal for me. Uh, relationships are really the thing that gets me out, you know. So like if someone I know is doing something, I'm going to show up. Um, for what they're doing, like, oh, I'm doing this. And then I end up going. And because I bring the energy, I'm the life of the party. Like I was actually at a, a birthday party last night when my aunts turned 70. And I was one of the first people on the dance floor. You know what I mean? I didn't need anyone to invite me. I'm like, I'm going to invite myself. Right. Um, there, was, there was live uh, soca and still pan and I'm West Indian. So of course I, yeah. I need a little reason to go <laughs> dancing. And But I, I bring that with me. But it's really... When I'm with people that I love, I'll do and try anything. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, I love that. You know, it reminds me even when I was younger. I would, did you always have that spirit about you? Because thinking back, even when I was younger, I've always been the person to try to do, you know, things outside of the box to create memories in my life. You know what I mean? So um, I remember working at a camp in Kingston, Illinois, right? And we had a mud pit there. And I remember I would consistently take my girls, take my group like to the mud pit. And I one time, so the whole summer, I didn't see anyone brown at all for the, the entire summer, nobody, child, adult or otherwise. So I decided one day, let's go to the, let's go to the mud pit and we're all going to experience being brown for a minute, just sit in the sun and be brown. And so <laughs> I took all these children to the mud pit and we all, you know, covered in mud and just set out and baked and we're just brown and part of the earth and connected to the, you know, to the soil and all that great stuff. Like we were all one, you know, and as crazy as it sounds like I, it was the most fun type of, you know, experiences that I was ever able to get into. We did night hikes. So like going out hiking with no, you know, no um, flashlights. Because, you know, your eyes adjust and everything. So I did things like that. Washing your hair in the rain. Have you ever done that? Not washing my hair, but I walk in the rain. Like, I actually still do that now. 
Yeah, I love going out experiencing the rain. Like we are waterproof or water resistant, I think at least. Yeah, and we won't get we don't people don't won't do it because they're afraid to get sick. But I'm just like, if you're taking care of your body, you're not gonna get sick. I actually have one of my good girlfriends. She and I specifically will go hiking when it's raining. Oh, that's and, really um, cool. It is everything. It's when you are outside, everything is soaked, the rain is just hitting you. It is that's magic. People trying to conjure up magic. I'm like, man, go in nature. That's it's magic. It is magical. I you, I look at the sunsets and I just I feel too often we're not aware. You know, like we we look uh, overlook rather. You know, the smallest things in life that are so beautiful. I was just looking, you know, looking at the sunset uh, the, the, yesterday or day before, and I'm just like, wow, the world's greatest artist. You know, like I, I would love to have these paintings around my home. You know, it, it's just so amazing. But we'll be driving down the street and not even see right above this all this traffic and all this nonsense right above just look up and there's beauty right there you know take a moment meditate calm your mind and recenter back into your life your moment all of that <laughs> <laughs> but so um i don't want to keep you too long i just as i said this was just a brief conversation but do you have any other words or anything that you can think of, like as we're wrapping up, as we're coming to our close, that you want to share about not just existing, but living? Yeah, I think what I would um, leave, I guess the, my last words, my closing thoughts would be <laughs> to make sure you keep taking care of yourself so you can show up for others. Um, for those of us who are, um, who love other people, I love people, you know, I'm not a, I'm not isolated. I'm not introverted. I'm not a, I am a bit of a homebody. I do love my house, but I love being around people and, you know, my relationships are welcome in my home. But I've realized that in order to like serve my community and to take care of other people that I have to first steward from like this body and self before mm -hmm. I can give out to others. And so I think that would be the thing for me is, and the people get into this like, oh, self care and self care is not selfish, but it does become selfish when you're doing it just for you. <laughs> then we get real selfish with it. And so let's just call it a day, right? But when we're thinking about, you know, because we're only here because somebody else laid down their life for us. Let's just keep let me clear. Yeah. You know, we did not make it to where we are on our solo dolo. Doesn't mean people didn't do us wrong, but there was someone that did you right along the way that helped you to get to where you are. And so I think as we're looking to love and take care of, you know, others, continue to take care of yourself and let some of that motivation be because I want to able to be available to those who are in my nucleus in my circle and in my community that brings us back to that common thread of um your light everybody has light and dark in them and actually shining your light and working on your light shines the light brighter on the rest of the world not just yours but it makes the light of the world brighter you know it just makes the world a better place especially I mean, yeah. whether you have kids or not it when you get older you're going to want the world to be a good place for you to be in, you know? So you have to contribute to that. I definitely, I love that. That was awesome. Um, um, so you all can find Princess Akiva. I have her linked on this communication. I also will share um, some more of her uh, information, some of her services and everything. Um, what's your website? Please give it to them so they can go directly to the website to schedule. You have a lot of good resources there as well. Yeah, we keep things easy around these parts. It's princess. Yeah. Hold on. It's princessakima.com. I'm trying to be over my name here. Let's, <laughs> let's use the technology. <laughs> princessakima.com is um, the website. And there's a contact number on there, contact email, and all my information is on that site. As well as a, great, a bunch of great resources that she has for you anyway. Great information. Um, she's always giving lives. Definitely make sure you tune in if you don't already know. Now you know. Um, make sure that you make your self-care a requirement today because you are not an option to this world. We are all connected. Thank you again for joining us, Princess Akima. You are lovely. You are Queen Akima to me. So Queen Princess Akima, thank you. Love and blessings to you. And you have a beautiful evening. Have a great weekend and knock it out the park in acupuncture school. Yes, <laughs> and we are because our community needs it. So yes, I am. Yes, definitely. Mm -hmm. All right. I, have, I really appreciate you truly. And I will be talking to you soon. Thank you all for joining us.